girl. Hey. Welcome back to Girl Meets Podcast. Hey guys, so it's Emma and Audrey back at it again. We have not done this podcast since our junior year in high school. Was it? Uh-huh. Yeah. And we are now sophomores in college. It's been almost four years. It's been a long time. Can you believe it's been almost four years? I was thinking about that the other day. Yeah. Because of you know who hit me up. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, it's been four years since then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's Same pretty such. wild. Um, We decided we wanted to start this up again. And usually we're not going to be in the same place. That's a big thing for show. We're home we're not. from college for winter break. Mm -hmm. and so tomorrow's Christmas Eve. Tomorrow and is Christmas Eve. Eve. That's crazy. And this is going to be uploaded on January 1st. 2024. 2024. We started this in 2020. 2019, I think. No, it was no 2020. 2020. Okay. This was COVID. Oh, yeah. That's crazy. Um, yeah. So, I don't know. We obviously took a long break. <laughs> <laughs> a break. <laughs> a break. I'm sure, We're like, sure. let's take at least four years off. <laughs> It will um, be good. <laughs> no. Um, we wanted to do this again because I just think, like, I don't know. It came up in conversation. A few times in the past, like, year. Yes. Absolutely. Like, yes. And then over Thanksgiving break is when Emma and I kind of just looked at each other and we were like, should we just start it up again? Yeah. And we're like, yeah. Why yeah. Not? Because, you know, we found a way where we can do long distance calls and record and mm -hmm. have like the audio sound good on each side. Yeah. Um, but anyway. And making it easier with editing, yeah. easier for like Instagrams. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we also like both needed like a hobby in our lives. And this was something that we came back to and we yeah. were like, it was really fun for us. It was fun for our friendship. And I feel like we can talk about new things now, like after so much has happened in our lives and we're in different stages now, whereas we were just in high school then and now we're adults and like going through not everything adult stuff, but like kind of the transition years of transitioning from a teenager into an adult, like those years are super hard. So yeah, we're excited to talk about it and also mm -hmm. like go through it at the same time mm -hmm. as we're talking about it. Yes. And like, that's kind of what our first episode is. It's going to be just kind of the transition from high school to college. And like, I don't know, reaching out to all those high school listeners out there, maybe who are worried about going into college and we're just going to kind of talk about what we have learned and our experiences and also just like in general what it will most likely be like okay the transition from high school to college is uh, it's a lot of things it's good and it's a new opportunity for you to kind of like reinvent yourself um especially if you're going away and you're going to meet new people um it's scary. It's hard to be away from family. It's hard to meet new people, hard to make new friends. Um, and I feel like you're kind of thrown into it. Like, I don't think that there was anything that someone could have told me to prepare me for my first year of college. Yeah. Um, and everything that I would experience feelings wise. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And we're just going to try to keep it like so honest because. And real. Yeah. Um, because these, yeah, everything we're going to say are things that we wish we knew, I guess, mm -hmm. before we left. Yeah. Um, yeah. Same, same as Emma. Like I, I, it's, it is scary. I had a hard time for sure. And a lot of people do like, and if you, whoever is listening right now, if you realize or have a hard, like are realizing that you're having a hard time your first year of college, that's okay. Like, yeah, I promise everyone is in the same boat. Like, seriously, everybody is in the same boat. It is not easy for anyone. Um, living on your own can be, it can be really exciting, but yeah, it can be challenging as well. Um, like being away from your parents, there's definitely pros and cons there. Mm -hmm. um, like you no longer are kind of like watched by them. Yeah. <laughs> the amount of independence that you have yeah. is almost an overwhelming amount of independence because your entire life you've had someone 
especially academically to be like like when's this homework due when do you have a test yeah when's class um and like one of my professors um she always talked about how much free time college students have now like just outside of class um so you have free time obviously to study and like do homework but I feel like you have so much free time during the day because mm-hmm. you're not in school from 7 a.m to 3 p.m anymore you're you only have an hour class some days <laughs> and then you have the rest of the day and majority of that is for school but you have the independence to choose exactly what you want to do with your time mm-hmm. and sometimes that's overwhelming like that was a little hard for me to know how to balance my time and how to choose it wisely yeah definitely. On specific things definitely um yeah just like adding on to that too is just like um kind of the whole thing with the motivation with uh going to class I feel like me I have had a really hard time with that (laughs) Um, we should talk about that oh I will because that is a huge thing that I Audrey and I both struggled with that yeah so you know if you just imagine yourself like in your bed in high school and you wake up and you're just like oh my god no I do not want to go to school today and you try to like lie to your parents and say that you're sick or you're not feeling well and then they're like okay you're going you're going and you know like you can't stay home you'll get in so much trouble from your parents you'll get in trouble from the school if your parents don't call you out um like you literally can't stay home because your parents are watching you the school is watching you like (laughs) you you are you are basically forced to go to school in high school um yeah by whoever it is that's telling you to go for sure um in college, obviously, your parents are not going to be there unless, like, you're a commuter student. Yeah, um, that's different. But both Emma and I live on campus, so we don't have our parents there. And we also don't have, like, you have to have your parents call you out yeah. um, in order to skip class type of thing. Like, you can just email your professors and literally just be like, oh, I'm like, I'm not feeling well today. Or Well, in some classes, yeah. like, attendance isn't even mandatory. So, like, that a too. lot of the times I wouldn't even email my professors. That too, Yeah. It kind of depends. I've had both where it's like it is mandatory um, or there's times when it's not. Yeah. Um, But because I don't have that person there looking over my shoulder saying, hey, you need to get this done. You need to get to class at this time. Uh, You need to get out of bed. Um, I don't care that you're saying you're sick. You're probably not actually sick. Like you need to go. I don't have that. We don't have that. So we are just, you know completely self-reliant and self-sufficient and we cannot yeah we can't rely on someone else telling us to go we have to get ourselves to go which can be so challenging at times yeah yeah that's when you need the motivation factor too which i think a lot of our people our age lack sometimes Mm -hmm. is just motivation and we struggle with procrastination um and i also feel like because we have that choice of deciding whether we want to go to class or not we have probably some better options in our head of why we shouldn't go to class of like oh well like I could go and study more for this one class and like in in my opinion if you can skip a class to go and study for a more important class I feel like that's I've done that before and I feel like it is beneficial in some I have ways. to yeah um but if it's like going to get coffee or like taking a nap or and you do that like every single week, then it gets like a little too much. And then it becomes like such a habit. So it's more of just like being cautious of how much you're skipping class because it became such a routine to me of like, oh, look, I can skip this week. And I think I didn't go to a full week of classes at all of my second semester of freshman year. I don't think I did either. (laughs) I'm not even gonna lie. I felt like I had senioritis. Like I did not want to go to class Same. ever. It was so horrible. Um, plus, I didn't really enjoy my classes at all because um, freshman year sometimes you're forced to take some gen ed classes that maybe you're not very interested in. So mm-hmm. it's harder to get yourself to go. Um, but yeah, 
biggest piece of advice from all of that is literally just go to your class. Just go. Like, yeah. no matter how you're feeling, just go. I mean, obviously, there's specific, like, um, <clears throat> excuses that totally make sense. Like, if you're actually, actually sick, like, don't go. But, yeah. but if you're just like, oh, I don't feel like it today, it'll be fine. Like, and your maybe your mindset is, oh, you know, this is my first time skipping this class. Don't even do it. Because literally yeah. what, what Emma said, it becomes a routine and a really unhealthy routine. And I've been there. Emma's been there. A lot of students have been oh, there. Yeah. Um, but like, you just kind of have to remind yourself, I'm paying for this. My pa Or my parents are paying for this. Um, and each class is literally costing you money. So like you're skipping out and then you or you're skipping a class and then you're lo you're basically losing money um because yeah. you're you're not gaining anything from it because um you're not being taught what was taught that day yeah you know mm -hmm. yeah it has like a price tag on it i guess it kind of does like each class is like thousands of dollars and I, like when you put it into that perspective as well like that it, it's something that's huge and you're like oh i probably shouldn't be skipping class right now yeah um definitely. and also I feel like something that helped me because this uh fall semester of my second year I've done a lot better at not skipping classes and it was kind of the fresh start of like having the summer to relax and then like moving into a new place um having new classes helped new teachers um but also something that helped was just not skipping class to begin with like yeah like to just not start it <laughs> kind of like what Audrey was saying mm -hmm. um and if I did I wanted it to be for a very good reason um and a lot of my professors were not strict on um like attendance policies um so I had the opportunities to miss class which I think made it even harder um but also like setting myself up in other aspects of my life in a in the best way I could. Um, so like having a good morning routine where it works for me and I knew that I could go to class after doing that morning routine. Like I'm not the kind of person who can wake up 30 minutes before class and then go. Some people that might work for them because they don't have like an hour to just sit around and like contemplate that. But for me, like I need to wake up two to three hours before a class have like a full-on day to myself before I can go mm -hmm. so I found that like waking up having enough time to like put on a cute outfit like do my hair a different way um doing my makeup making myself a really nice breakfast journaling reading studying or something before um it kind of like just got me in the groove of going I was like, well, I'm already going. Like, I don't want to just sit in bed and mm -hmm. lay down and go to sleep. I would like to go to class because, like, what else am I going to do? Um, so I think that helped. Um, and I think also, like, if you can choose classes that you know are at good times for you also helps. Like, there's, like, the, the, the trend going around with, like, females they're like bad hours, like from like three to five or whatever. No, seriously, it's, it's so true. It's so though. true. Like you just want to fall asleep. It's so like I never plan classes then. I always like to have like early morning ish into yeah. like early afternoon classes. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're not that way and you like to sleep in, then like give yourself time to sleep in if you can. It's yeah. like also not setting yourself up to like not go to that class. Like if you hate waking up early, don't sign up for an 8 a.m. Yeah. Like you're not going to change. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like yeah. don't do not do that to yourself. If you want to start getting up early, get up early without the class. Um, because I feel like like if I were to wake up for an 8 a.m. class, I would not want to go to that class. Mm -hmm. Like no one wants to sit in an 8 a.m. lab or lecture. Yeah, no. That so, sucks. Yeah, I feel like so like setting yourself up in other aspects of your life also helps not skipping class, staying motivated, and like the things that you're doing outside of class also affect your homework, your studying habits, how you're doing in school. So, yeah, yeah. And, and also sorry. when you're sorry, when you're planning your schedule, like make sure that there's some breaks everywhere because this past semester I was taking 
two classes in the morning, then I worked, and then I took another class, and there was literally no break more than 15 minutes in between each of those. Um, so I never had time to get lunch. I had to like eat a big breakfast and had to have that time me over for a really long time. Um, and that was every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I don't know if I said that or not, but I totally regret not allowing myself a break. Like seriously, give yourself some grace, give yourself a break. And um, mm -hmm. that way you won't want to like skip classes. Like mm -hmm. if you know, oh, like I have like this break today between two classes or whatever, that's when you can maybe take a nap or maybe, you know, get some food in you. Um, yeah, just like piling your schedule up too much, I think almost made me hate going to class even more um, mm -hmm. because I would wake up on Monday, Wednesday, Friday and be like, wow, today is going to be so busy and I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to barely get any food. Like yeah. it was my fault for setting my schedule up like that. Like you have control over setting up your schedule. So make sure that you really will enjoy it and you're not going to regret it. Yeah. I feel like that also goes along with just like, like giving yourself grace in that first semester, especially because you don't know exactly how you're going to like things. Mm -hmm. Like I personally don't like breaks in between my classes because I, if I take a nap, I won't want to wake up and I'll skip that class. So it's like, also giving yourself grace of you don't know exactly how you want to be in college or who you are in college because you might have changed since high school and your routines have changed and your habits have changed. Mm -hmm. So also giving yourself grace in that and letting yourself explore different um, schedules and routines um, to figure out exactly what you like because I learned that I don't like um, breaks in my schedule and I would rather get it all done. Okay. Yeah, so, that's fair. So, like, just letting yourself explore those different, um, I don't know what you would call it, like, different schedules, I guess, um, <clears throat> and giving yourself grace that you don't know exactly what you're going to like and not mm -hmm. like. Yeah. And then once you figure that out, do what you like, um, because everyone is so different. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess for me, like, I... <laughs> What I meant was more like, I don't know. I don't know. But I guess my situation was really unique because I would have to get up at like 8.30. No, just kidding. 9 o'clock, go get breakfast. Then I had class at um, 10.30. And then I wasn't done with stuff until 4.30. Yeah, like so that's a lot. A lot of the times when people do back-to-back -back classes, they'll maybe have two back-to-back -back or maybe three tops. But I had four things back to back. Yeah, that's a um, lot. So I think, <laughs> I think that'd be a lot for anybody. Um, and anyone would want to break it between four different like hour to two hour things. Mm -hmm. Like it's just a lot. Um, and I know that like people are like, oh, but in high school, you know, we're there for however long, six, seven hours. It's not the same. It's not because I don't know why it's not the same. It's just not like. It's not once you already start the routine of only having two to three classes a day and they're only like an hour each. College feels just the act of like being like present in class. That part feels very easy. Um, obviously, the workload and like the rigorous programs are harder, but mm -hmm. like it's so it's so different. And then like you get so um and it becomes easy but also like if you were to go back to high school I could not do high school again after no. like going like after having like Wednesdays and Fridays off like oh yeah I'm down for my schedule like <laughs> I don't want to do anything now <laughs> yeah and it's also like in high school I feel like a lot of people would have either a study hall or they'd have time in other classes to do so homework true. Um, or do work for any of your classes, really. Um, but in college, you go to the class, you're learning something the entire time, and Absolutely. you don't have time to do homework for that class. You don't have time to do homework for other classes. Mm -hmm. Like, you really don't. Yeah. So it's almost like you still are in school for that long. Yeah. Like, the length of a high school day, maybe even longer, because if you work in all of the homework and all the studying that you have to do, it's a lot. it seems just as long as a normal high school day. Like... Um, just in a different, like, 
just in a different setting and yeah. location and it's all on your terms and your time except for like your class times yeah but like you get to decide you get to decide when you want to do homework like you can do homework at 12 in the morning or you can wake up early and do it at 7 in the morning like or you could do it during lunch you know mm-hmm. what I mean it's yeah. different it's very different along with uh academics being a lot different in school and just living on your own being a lot different um the social aspect and making new friends is also very different. Um, Mm -hmm. A lot of people, not everybody, but a lot of people have been going to school with the same people since maybe sixth grade, right? Yeah. Um, Obviously there's like kindergarten through fifth grade, but for our high school, it was four different middle or four different elementary schools going into one middle school. And then all of those people went into high school together. So Mm -hmm. For us, since sixth grade, we've been going to school with the same exact people. Everyone is a familiar face. You know, you might not, you're not going to be friends with everybody in high school, but you are familiar enough with them um, and you have been familiar with them for a long time that going to school is comfortable social wise um, for the most part. I mean, I remember I have like bad social anxiety. So even knowing most everyone in the high school, I'd still get a little bit anxious, but for the most part, you're comfortable because you've been around the same people for a long time. Um, you probably have made some really good friendships um, throughout middle school or high school, and you've just been going to school and living by them for so long. Yeah. Um, but then poof, you're gone in a different, like you're in a different environment. You might be out of state. Um, you might be really close to home, but maybe all your friends from high school are other places. Um, There's, you know, a variety of different experiences that people have. Like you might be commuting to school, like I mentioned earlier. Um, But like, I mean, uh, overall, you are going to be going to a school with all new people. Which is exciting, but also really nerve wracking at the same time. I think something that helps is like a dorm setting. My dorm experience, I feel like it was really rare um, just from other people that I've talked to, but my whole dorm floor and I, we were all like best friends. Um, So like doors open all the time, people in the middle rooms, like the lobby um, of the floor always were out there. We would play game nights every, almost every single night like big groups of like 15 to 20 of us. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was very easy to meet new people. And my school, Grand Valley, they like did so many things in the beginning of like freshman orientation to get you to know people. Um, That's how I met like some of my best friends now, literally through orientation. Um, And I, I really think like putting yourself out there, like almost in the most obnoxious way, Mm -hmm. like, don't be afraid to like go and knock on someone's door or like find their Snapchat through like or group me through um like RA things. Like I had a I had a group me um group chat with my RA and like all the people in my building. Don't be afraid to reach out to those people because they live in your building, they're near you. Um and also they're also freshmen. And going they, through um, the same yes. exact anxiety for sure. Yes. Yeah. They're also going through the exact same thing that you're going through. Um, especially since they go to the same school, they're going through all of the different freshman things with you too. Um, they probably aren't from, especially if it's not a community college, they're probably not from around that area. They're probably not going home every weekend, that kind of thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So just like reaching out and doing it in an obnoxious way almost because you really have to put yourself out there. It's not weird when people do that like freshman year Mm -hmm. because that's kind of what you expect or you're like, yes, thank you so much for reaching out. I really appreciate that because I'm in the same boat and I'm also trying to make friends. Yeah. Um, so I feel like that's good and also like not putting too much pressure on yourself um of once you meet someone like needing to be friends with them or needing to be close yeah I feel like making friends is kind of like yeah it's kind of like dating almost like 
you're meeting so many new people. Don't feel pressured to get someone's Snapchat or Instagram right away. Don't feel pressured to connect with that person right away. Everyone is so different and everyone is meeting so many new people at the same mm-hmm. time that the first person you meet is not going to be your best friend. Like even the third or fourth person you meet isn't going to be your best friend. Um, or they might. Yeah, or they might. <laughs> yeah. It's so, really all up in the air. Like yeah. you don't really know. It's it's an anxious time because you're just not aware of what's really going to happen. Um, and obviously that's how life is. Like you just cannot predict the future at all. Um, and the best thing you can do is just be yourself and go to the events that the school organizes, go to the events that clubs organize. Just go, even though they seem stupid, just go, just go. Like I didn't, I didn't go to as many as I should have, I guess is what I'm saying. I went to some, um, my freshman year, they usually do like at my school, they do like welcome week, which is Mm -hmm. a week long, um, a week long period for just freshmen to be there, Mm -hmm. not even the whole school, just freshmen. And they have events every single night. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's like the week before school starts. So yeah, I went to some of the events. I didn't go to all of them. I wish I had gone to all of them now looking back. Um, which is why I'm saying just go to all of them because yeah, just go like, it's only a week. Just go. Yeah. Cause like, (laughs) imagine it's a week long. You meet someone on Monday, you see them again at the next event on Tuesday. You see them again on that next event on Wednesday. Yeah. Um, and that can happen with multiple people. And then, you know, the multiple occasions of seeing them within even the same week, like within days of each other, like that really helps build the uh, memory of the person yeah. in both their minds and your mind. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they'll be like, oh my gosh, yeah, like I totally met you yesterday. Cause like, it's kind of different when you see someone one weekend and then you see them the next weekend, like there's a whole week in between. You might not remember, you might've been <laughs> drunk so you, and they might've been drunk. So like, the, um, <laughs> we'll go into that, like parties and stuff. But um, anyway, that's like another thing, like social aspect, going to parties. Um, and you don't even have to drink. You don't have to do any of that stuff if you're not comfortable with that. But literally, like if you hear about one and you, and someone says, hey, come with me, or you just want to go with maybe your roommate or something, that's another really good way to meet people too. Because that is a very like relaxed, like low key, just everyone there is having a fun time. Um, Everyone, like, I don't know, when I've gone to parties, everyone has been like fun to talk to, just going up to them being like, hey, like, I don't know, just a random person. Um, that's just kind of how I am though. But yeah, I think that also depends on who you are as a person. Exactly. A lot of like, I am not that kind of person to like go to the parties and that's not my favorite way to meet friends because I just don't do, I just don't do that as much in my life. And I think the way to meet some of the best people in your life is to find them doing like-minded activities if that makes sense yeah so like also but like if you are a super social person and you love meeting people in that way and you're excited about that part in college then definitely go do that because that is a great way because that yeah then you are meeting like-minded people like you yeah and like you again like I said you don't have to drink you don't even have to be a big party person I think it's an it's still important though to maybe at least go to one your freshman year like I don't know because The thing I was saying about familiar faces um, at high school and how that made it comfortable for me, um, going to parties helps you make those connections and see those familiar faces because there's probably going to be more people there than there are at school, like school organized events. Like, I mean, it really depends, honestly, on what's going on. But um, I think it depends on the kind of person you are, too. Well, yeah. And I keep saying, (laughs) I literally keep saying that, too, is like, you don't have to go. Yeah, you don't. But, and you don't have to drink again, but I don't know. That's how, that's just my experience. That's how I made connections literally just by like seeing their faces and then seeing them on campus. And I'm like, okay, like I know more people or I'm familiar with more people than I think I am. Mm -hmm. Um, Like I went to, I don't know. I went to a couple at the beginning of my freshman year and I was not a party person. I was not like, this is why I'm saying this because that's not the kind of person that I was, um, in high school at all. Like there was a lot of people who were like that at our high school, but I never was. And then I was really nervous to go to these parties because I'm like, this isn't me. This is weird. Like, 
I'm kind of nervous. I'm scared. Um, but literally if you go, like you're going to be, you're going to have one person at least with you, your roommate that like, you will know well enough to just be like, Hey, want to go to this. Um, and yeah, it might be nerve wracking. You might show up even if you hate it. Like if you end up hating it, you can leave after 10 minutes. You know what I mean? But at least you tried. Right. Um, so that was something that I really like, and now I'm actually more of a party person than I obviously was before. Um, and at first I hated going, um, but I do, I will say that like some people that I'm, that I have really great conversations with are at parties or I'll see them like later in the week and I'll go and say hi. Um, one of my friends who's in my sorority, like we went to the same party, like our first party ever in college um, together because we had like mutual friends at that point. And now she and I are super close and we talk about that experience all the time mm -hmm. and how scared we both were. And so like, you don't even have to be a party person. Like I wasn't at all. Um, it's still fun. And like, even if it's not leave, you know, but like, mm -hmm. like, I don't know, just pushing through the anxiety is important because there, I had so much anxiety freshman year and I, there were so many times when I was like, no, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. If I had like avoided everything, if I had listened to my anxiety the whole time, um, I would not be who I am today. Like, seriously, I would be very antisocial and I wouldn't know that many people on campus. Like, I just like the idea of at least knowing what someone looks like, like, oh, I've definitely met them before, or I've definitely been in their presence before outside of just walking past them on campus. I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I, yeah, no, for sure. I feel like ways that I've been able to make friends outside of parties and stuff mm -hmm. has, and I'm um, not trying to preach, go to parties, go to parties. I, I know it sounds like I am, <laughs> I guess I've just had a good experience with it, but yeah, which I'm is sorry. fine. I think it's good that we have both yeah. perspectives. Yeah. That's good. Um, I feel like clubs and jobs on mm -hmm. campus or off campus, um, definitely like when you're living in the dorms, people on your dorm floor, um, I feel like um, <clears throat> just people in your classes, like, again, kind of that factor of being obnoxious about it, mm -hmm. like really making an effort to talk to that person, be really friendly with them, invite them out for coffee, like invite them to different events like just do it because you never know like I've met some of my best friends through my classes and through my clubs um and like I was in a Taylor Swift club last year and I met great people through that club oh I wish and, my school had that yeah. so bad and like again that's a like-minded activity so you already have something in common you already have something to talk about with that person um, the other club I'm in is Nishla, which is the speech pathology and audiology club at my school, which is my major. Um, and that again is a like-minded factor. Um, and for that club, we have to volunteer, we have to do community events. So then you like are kind of obligated to talk to people because you then have someone to do that event with. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's so things, true. Cause yeah. then you can like go to those specific events with the people you've met within the club or whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, exactly. That's nice. Yeah. And for sure, like roommates, um, mutual friends, I think is also something important. Um, oh, and, friends of friends. Yeah, yeah. Friends of friends and jobs. Um, my first job at, in Michigan, was it was harder for me to make friends because they were a lot of older people um and that job was pretty clicky um but the new job yeah. I'm at is an on-campus job I highly if you need a job or if you want to get a job I highly recommend an on-campus job they do a great job at like accommodating with your schedule it's not too yes. many hours it's not too little um and also, those people also go to Grand, or not Grand Valley, wherever you go to school. Your college, your school, whatever it is, <laughs> they yeah. They also go to your school, um, and it's, it, it's fun because you can relate on a level of working, and I think coworkers and friendships with coworkers is such a, it's such like a different, unique friendship. It is. It's different it's so than like good. a regular friendship. I don't know what it is. It hits is. so hard. It does. <laughs> 
Um, and so my job specifically has like made such an effort to really create a fun group of friends and we hang out outside of work with like our boss and our managers. Mm -hmm. So that's also fun. Um, and another thing like intramural sports is really fun. I'm doing an intramural volleyball team next semester with my coworkers. Um, so just like finding people to do that with, there's also, um, I don't know if I'm sure Augustana had this, but uh, like Instagram pages or um, like Grand Valley had like a whole website of like incoming freshmen and like almost like yeah. a almost like a dating app, but like for friendships. Um, also doing those because I've met good people through that too. Yeah, there's usually like some sort of either Facebook or Instagram yeah, account that will like most that. likely post both like you and then other people yeah. that are going to the school like a lot of times people use it to find a roommate yeah um but it also helps you kind of just like even just like looking at it and then you mm -hmm. can be like oh i know this person's name now or like yeah. i know their face mm -hmm. so then or if you see them, them on, on campus Instagram, yeah that DMing too them. they usually will like tag the person yeah. in the picture which is really nice um yeah, yeah dming them hey I'm going to this school too. Let's yeah. talk or whatever. Yeah, which is not weird at all. It's not Everyone weird. Does it. <laughs> it's does not it. weird. Like I have gotten messages from some people who go to my school that I didn't really know. Mm -hmm. Um and I've never once been like, "Ugh, that's so weird. Why would they do that?" I'm like, "Oh my gosh, I feel so like appreciated right now that that they made the effort to to reach out to me for sure. Um and say literally just say like, "Hey" or whatever mm -hmm. it is. So um, it's really nice. And going back to like jobs. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. I work in admissions at my school. So I'm a tour guide and we, we have like this student, uh, this student worker room. Um, so you're just like sitting around chatting with your friends all day. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously working, um, but <laughs> you know, you're all in there together. Um, and then, yeah, you just make a lot of friends through that. Like I just yeah. started this job this year. Um, but yeah, I would recommend on-campus jobs for sure. I think we'd both recommend that. Um, yeah. Because then you can stay on campus too if you need to go to work. Like you're, it's just mm -hmm. right there on campus. So I also feel like I had a job my second semester of freshman year a lot. I don't know. I only know maybe one other person outside of work at my school that has a job in college. I not a lot of my friends had jobs in college at all. Um, and so I feel like if you need a job in college, it's good to become friends with those people because they relate to having homework on top of work. Yeah. Whereas your other friends don't. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which, some people don't need to work during yeah. college and that's and, okay and they, too. And they can't work in college, yeah. which is totally fine. They're too busy or whatever it is. Yeah. But I do think like if you can get a job or you feel like you can, um, I don't think it's a bad idea to get one right away mm -hmm. because it allows you to have something other than just schoolwork and college being your whole life. Um, and then you can meet people that way too, which is great. Yeah. yeah. And like, personally, I find a lot of fulfillment out of working um, and obviously like getting money and doing, especially with my job, it's just a lot of reward into it. And um, I find a lot of fulfillment from it so if you can get a job like that um it gives you more of a passion as well it helps build your resume um yeah it looks good and mm -hmm. it also helps time management and balancing schoolwork um, yeah and if you are someone who is struggling to make friends and struggling to put yourself out there it's a great way to do that and also it gives you something to do because I feel like when you don't have stuff to do, it can feel really isolating and lonely. Yeah. And I'm someone who gets so anxious when I don't have anything to do. So Same. work really helps that. Volunteering is super helpful. One of my roommates um, last year, she um, volunteered for like a food service company um, every week, maybe a few times a week. And that was like not a job, but it was similar to a job. She just wasn't getting paid for it. But it was, again, something to get volunteer hours in, something to um, have a schedule in, um, build a routine around. So things like that, I think, also help, especially if you're very routine oriented. Mm -hmm. That helps. But yeah. <laughs> so 
um, going along with just making friends. Um, there's also like something so important that you need to remember too. And like, Emma, you mentioned this, that, oh, like your first, the first person you meet isn't going to be your best friend or um, third, fourth, or whatever you said. I can't remember exactly. Um, yeah. But yeah, you're going to meet lots of people and not everyone's going to be your bestie and that's okay. Um, and there might be times when someone does become your bestie, but they turn out to not be the person that you thought that they were. Like, I'm just going to be so honest right now. Um, making friends in college, like they're literally brand new people. You have no idea like who they are truly. Um, and I'm not saying don't trust anyone. Like, obviously that's not what I'm saying, but <laughs> basically I just want to put out there that like college is the time to literally become the best version of yourself and just like, um, do what's best for you. You're learning how to take care of yourself without your parents there and taking stuff. Yeah. Taking care of yourself, like comes with making sure that you have good people in your life. Um, and if you become friends with someone in college and then you realize, oh, maybe this person isn't the best um, to have in my life right now, or maybe they're not as nice as I thought they were, or like, you know, like you meet people, they're really nice. And then you realize they were kind of fake from the beginning, you know, that's okay. Like literally being like, okay, you know what? No, I'm not going to deal with this. Um, just making sure that, yeah, when you're in college, um, once you do get to the point of having a couple like really solid friendships, um, I know we're just talking about kind of the beginning, but I'm talking about a little bit later when you do have some good friends, um, mm -hmm. at your school and, um, don't just stay in a friendship because, of the fear of not having that many friends in school. Like I don't have that many friends at school. Um, I have a couple pretty close ones and genuinely I feel like that's all I need because they're, they're good people. I have my friends at home. I have my family. I have like a good support system in my life um, filled with people that do make me a better version of myself. Like every single day, I feel like um, mm -hmm. they have done something for me. Um, and obviously like it's reciprocated. I do stuff for them back. I'm not being like, I just take and take from friends, but <laughs> if someone at college, you know, that you've met, you've become friends with turns out to not be a good fit for you. It's okay. Mm -hmm. That's okay. And I would just say, I know that it'd be hard to be like, mm, maybe I should stop hanging out with them. But if you feel that intuition, like if you feel that in your gut, then you're probably right. And you probably shouldn't hang out with them anymore, if that makes sense. Because seriously, like college, again, is really like a time when you're growing up, you're maturing, and you don't want to have anyone in your life that is dragging you down. Yeah, be picky. And like, seriously, don't, be picky. like, don't be mean to yourself about being picky and having high expectations and friendships mm -hmm. either. Um, because those people that you meet are probably going to be lifelong people. Um, and if they aren't, that's fine. Um, <clears throat> but it is a, you do grow in a different way. Whereas mm -hmm. like maybe some friendships in high school, you've outgrown them and that's okay too. Yeah. Um, but in college, you're in a stage where you are growing up and you're becoming your, like you're becoming you. Um, whereas yeah. middle school and high school, you're in this period of changing all the time and in college and as you're growing up through college you're kind of at now a steady pace and you're kind of like okay I kind of know who I'm becoming now and mm -hmm. what I want in my life and you're you are experiencing new things but you're also deciding what you like and what you don't like and you're knowing that more within yourself yeah definitely. and so then that's when you really know who you want to be around and mm -hmm. who you like being around and what values align with yours um so it is okay to be picky and it yeah. is okay to not have a lot of friends. Yes, yeah, definitely. Seriously. Like, don't worry about having a lot of friends in college. Like, mm -hmm. I don't personally, the only thing that I feel is like big groups of friends is like sororities and frats. Like, yeah, and you pay for that. Like, you pay to be in that. So it's like, <laughs> no, literally, I was with someone the other day and they were like, I'm paying those, like, those are friends that I pay for. Yep, I was basically. Like, it's like, it's not like fully like that. Yeah, no, you're yeah. paying to be in it because I am in a sorority. So mm -hmm. I have that perspective. But I will say that like, you may see a big sorority and be like, oh, they're all such good friends. Yeah. Like, I wish I had. 
It's not like that at all. Trust me. I have maybe like, I may be close with six people out of like the 80 something in my sorority. Yeah, I'll put that out there. It's fine. Okay. Because I mean, it's the truth. Like I'm super close with maybe five or six people in my sorority. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's how I feel like a lot of people are within every sorority, every fraternity. It's because it's not really possible to be super close with 80 people. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's just like, that's a lot of people. And at bigger schools, like the sororities are even bigger. So, um, but like, even like, if you do, whoever's listening to this, if you do end up like going through rush and like pledging and stuff, it can be really beneficial because you do meet um, a lot of great people. Um, And I definitely like don't regret ever joining the sorority. Like I do really like it because um, I've met some really, really great people Um, Mm -hmm. and some people that I consider to be like really close friends. So, um, but again, like for everyone, you're not going to become friends with every single individual in that group yeah you can be like you'll be friendly but like it's hard to get to know that many people at literally the same time you know what yeah. I mean and like um, what like what I mean is that those are really the only big groups of people that I yeah. ever really see like, yeah there's never like in high school you know who the big popular people yeah. are. you don't know that in college like you no. don't care about that either no, no one else does and yeah. so like if you have just like five friends over, that's a sleigh, or like even just one, even just one, one girlfriend, one boyfriend, it's totally fine. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like college isn't very clicky at all. Like, I don't feel that way. At yeah. least, especially going to a big school, it might going be to different a bigger school, for yeah. your school. I yeah. like there are so many people. Not Grand Valley is like a medium sized college. But compared to your school, I have like twenty six thousand more students at my school <laughs> than you. Yeah. Um. So it's she a does. difference. Uh-huh. So like me, I don't know everyone at Grand Valley, and like I see a different person every single day when yeah. I'm walking to when I'm walking to classes. Even I never me, see anyone out. Literally, even me, I go to a school with two thousand five hundred students. So it's like <laughs> so hella small. small. So small. It's hella small. But every day. I surprise myself. I every day I see some a new face. Yeah. I'm like, how is this possible? But like, do you I'm run s- into a lot of people. Oh yeah, like I've I never I, run into oh, okay. anyone. Never. Which is something into- I like actually. That running into people. Yeah, and, like, I like on I my way to class. Yeah, on my way to class, I'm like, hey, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Um, but it's good though, from like a super small college like yours, from your perspective, that it's not clicky either. Yeah, it's really not like. Yeah. I don't think it is like you kind of see different friend groups together, but they're not clicky. Yeah, no, it's they'll not clicky. talk to everyone and like yeah. the individuals within that group will have mm-hmm. their own friends. And, and you're kind of a part yeah. of like a bunch of different groups too, mm-hmm. like your work group, your class, your classes group, your study groups, your um, roommates. Like you're a part of many different groups, but no one is clicky. I feel yeah, which is nice because it is it's nice. different from co- or from high school. Mm -hmm. yeah that's a big thing that changed yeah that I really liked yeah it's Um, nice and if it does become clicky I feel like removing yourself from that situation because I don't think it's supposed to be like that no college is it should be pretty drama free yeah and college is (sighs) I feel like supposed to be a very individual journey and Um, it's supposed to be your path and the way that you want to go down it's not supposed to be about drama and no stupid things it, it's supposed to be about like your education and like making great memories with new people mm-hmm. creating new experiences and new moments in your life mm-hmm. and I something also that I want to emphasize is that you're never going to get back this time that's something that I think about every day like I do, do not take college for granted yeah it's and so awesome College is is so awesome. It's awesome, but it's also, like, a very confusing time. Yes. Yeah. But, like, like when you know you're in a good moment, really appreciating that good moment and being present and also knowing that after this, you're never going to get that back at all. Like, you're never going to be in this position where you can go to school and have like great friends in your life, making great new memories, not having to work a full-time job. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're worrying about money, but not to the point where, like, you have to pay rent every month. Right. You're not. You're not taking you know, care of kids. You're exactly. not taking care of, like, a marriage. Exactly. Like, you are seriously mm-hmm. so independent. Yeah. Um, which is why I say, like, it's okay if 
you're cutting toxic people out of your life because it seriously is a time when like you want to do what's absolutely best for you because you are you are setting yourself up for life basically like after college um i mean we're both going to grad school but grad school's different well yeah but like after that then we're like in the real world working women and you know college is the time where we build the foundation no for real uh we build the foundation um for ourselves in order for us to have a successful life. Mm-hmm. If you don't do what's best for you now, and like if you don't build a good foundation for yourself now, it's going to be hard to maintain relationships when you're older. It's going to be hard to take care of yourself, take care of children, keep a job. Like, you know what I mean? That Those yeah. are all really big, big things that might be daunting. But mm-hmm. all I mean is like knowing yourself, loving yourself, figuring out exactly what makes you happy and who makes you happy is like seriously what's gonna set you up for a really successful and happy life yeah and just like just doing it like if your friends are going on a trip go on the trip like if you're if you're debating on like going out with someone just go out with them. be spontaneous be spontaneous and also know yeah money comes back <laughs> It's not going to be gone forever. Yeah. You have your will. you have your entire life, literally your entire life to work. Mm-hmm. You have, it, like, this moment in your life is so special where you don't have to work all the time. You, I mean, you have to worry about money, but again, like, you don't have to worry about paying the bills. Yeah. Like, take advantage of that time. Like, money comes back, time doesn't. And I think that's something that I've tried to really take advantage of right now, especially in my life. Mm -hmm. Although like you have to be smart with money and make sure that you're not going into debt or anything. Yeah. But you're never going to get that time back and you're never going to have the opportunity again to like take a spontaneous trip Yeah. or like just, or like just drive home and see your friends once in a while. Like in a few years, like you could be across the country from your best friend. It's like, take that time. Don't take advantage of that or take advantage of that time don't take it for granted. That's what I mean. Yes. <laughs> um, don't take it for granted. Um, and yeah. just, just do it. Like if you want something, just do it because yeah. money comes back. Moments don't. And Seriously. I don't think that, I think now, especially in the world we live in, you shouldn't miss out on the things that you really want to do Yeah. just because yeah. of money or because of your job or because of something else. And I think that college is a great example of that. You're so wise, Emma. Oh Thank my God. you. You're like, you sound like this book that I read for my class oh. that was talking all about that, where it was like, would you choose more time or more money? And like, choose time for real choose because time. yeah, you, you really like really learn how to live in the moment, however you, you can. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, really yeah. try because seriously, like you're gonna look back at at some point when Emma and I are old and gray, we're gonna look back and be like, "Wow, college was so awesome." Yeah, and, and it's just wow. Like, I'm so glad I didn't yes. take that for granted. Yeah. yeah, and even like if, um, and of course, like different situations are so different. But if you are in a situation where you can go away to school or yeah. like you can get an apartment on your own or with roommates, like do it. Like, I just, I, I don't know. My my mom is the one who has told me this. Me and my mom, like, live very similar lives. And, like, what, what I'm doing right now, she was doing in her life. Mm. And she's always told me money comes back, time doesn't. And she's always told me you have your entire life to work. Like, yeah. go and experience life right now. That's what my Be- dad, like, yeah. tells me too. Yeah. And, like, that yeah. is some, that is something that has stuck with me. And I think that that's why I went to college right away. And yeah. I had that opportunity. If it, even if I, even if I didn't have the money to go to college, I probably still would have went because yeah. you'll be in debt, but like everyone's going to be in debt. Everyone is going to be, everyone's going to be in debt yeah. in college and that's okay. And I just Seriously, think that that's after okay, that's going, normal. yes. And after experiencing college, you, there is no other way to get the college experience other than going to college. I'm sorry, but there isn't like the experience of college that we have experienced is so different than someone who is not in school. And that's fine. You don't have to experience that. If you don't want that in your life, don't do it. But 
I'm if you have like an just a little part of you that wants that it's okay to experience that and it's okay to make that risk yeah. and and if you end up not liking it mm-hmm. leave like leaving a school mm-hmm. leaving college and transferring yeah. schools that's all totally okay totally fine and it's all normal i know a lot of people who have yeah. done it my yes. sister my some of my friends like mm-hmm. a lot yeah exactly so. that's another thing like also know that you can always go home you can always drop out you can always switch your major yeah you can like, take a semester off yeah, and try to this, figure some yes. things out. It happens. This is the time to do it. This mm-hmm. is the time where it is okay to do that. Yeah, not that much is at stakes. Like, oh, no. seriously, not that much. Um, so, yeah, you know, everybody's college experience is different. Mm-hmm. Um, and we might even make an episode about this. I um, think we should. With different people's yeah. college experiences that we know of. Um, but, yeah, everyone, everyone's... I guess I should say this period of time, it's like 18 to 22 or whatever. Um, This period of time is really different for everybody. Some Mm -hmm. people might go to trade school, the military, uh, college, community college, commute to school. There's so many different things. Mm -hmm. Um, And obviously, like, we're not experts on any other experience besides our own. So um, both of us, yeah, both of us, four year college. both living on campus, basically, um, or in a in an apartment, then, technically off campus, but very two close to drive. Campus. Yeah, yeah. So um, that's our own experience. So that's mm-hmm. kind of I don't know. We were just also remember <laughs> giving advice from our own experience. Yeah, exactly. And just to give like the listeners a different perspective, and obviously, if you're looking for another perspective, go listen to another podcast and listen to that one. Um, yeah. But, <laughs> Also remember how young you actually are. Um, like, what I was um, deciding on changing my major or not, and if I was going to change, I would have to do grad school. And I was like, oh, like I'm gonna, I'm not gonna graduate with my friends, and like, I'm gonna be so old when I graduate. Like, I want to start life already. But like, you are now, starting life already. Well, yeah. Also, <laughs> but also like. At 22 when you graduate, do I really want to start my life at 22 yet? No. 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 And also no. remember. You want to live with me and go to grad school with <laughs> exactly. me. Exactly. <laughs> well, when we graduate I grad school. I want to do school, that so bad. Yes. And when we graduate grad school, we'll be 24. Yeah. It's okay. 24 is literally you, so young. Does anyone notice how young 24, 24 is? 24 is so young. Like, I'd rather start my life at 24, 25. Like, I'd rather start my life at 30. I'd still feel same. young. I'd still same. feel young. Same. Like, literally. So just remember how young you are and you have, like, you don't need to rush. If you have to take an extra year, fine. That's okay. You don't need to start yeah. when it's, like, societal or society's expectation. expectation. Yeah. To start. You don't have to. Go at your own pace, seriously. seriously Go at your do. own pace. You know yourself mm-hmm. the best. Mm-hmm. And... Follow your gut and trust your intuition because yes. it's right. Facts. Facts. No cap. Slay. Facts, no cap. Facts, no printer. <laughs> wow. Our first Girl Meets Podcast <laughs> season 2024. 2024. 2024. We are back and better than ever, guys. Um, This felt really good. This felt so good. We were both very nervous at the beginning. We were like... Are we going to be able to do this still like we did in high school? But I think we even did better than we did in high school. I think so, too. High school, we were chaotic and we were a mess and, like, <laughs> nothing was organized. <laughs> nothing. Everything was an organizational mess and it was yeah. just bad. Um, So this time around, we're going to do better and we're going to – I'll just put this disclaimer out. We're going to try our best to post every single week Yeah. Um. on what? Mondays. S- Mondays. Mondays. Mondays, Monday. um, and it'll be early in the morning. So I don't know. We're still deciding if we want to do like yet. six a.m. or like twelve a.m. Yeah, we, we, we're not really sure. <laughs> but it's gonna be on Mondays. Yeah, um, every week we'll see. So. Um, follow our Instagram, Grammys Podcast underscore. Yes, um, I'm gonna try and work on like a Facebook maybe. Yes, um, I feel like these videos are fun the videos maybe are we fun. could upload them on a youtube channel maybe yeah we could fun. we could um but yeah so, i hope you guys enjoyed yeah. um 
Stay tuned for next Monday when our next episode will come out. Slay. Happy holidays and happy new year. Happy new year. Slay. Okay. Wait, should we have an outro? We have an outro. The. Okay. Bye. Okay, we're signing off now. Bye. Bye.